In this video, you'll learn the tips, tricks, tools, and strategies to become a more efficient and better reader. It doesn't matter if you're reading a book, an article, an academic paper, or a cooking recipe. We'll cover when to quit something, the different levels of reading, how to choose great books, and how to improve your reading comprehension. But first, to kick us off, I want to look at some incredible words from the one and only Charlie Munger, who said, In my whole life, I have known no wise person over a broad subject matter area who didn't read all the time. None. Zero. But this is only true if you can remember and apply the lessons and insights from what you read and do so in a wise and intelligent manner. So with that, let's explore the tested insights that we found to be most helpful for reading. I present to you Farnham Street's Manifesto on Reading. The first thing you have to understand is that it's okay to quit books. I'm not sure exactly where the lie came from that told you you weren't allowed to quit books, but it is horribly wrong. Bad books are a grind. There's no need to read them to the end if you don't actually like it. So start books quickly, but give them up easily. Putting a bad book down creates the opportunity and space for a great book. But I should say this though, real quick, and this is an important lesson, that a bad book when you were 18 might actually be a great book when you're 35. So if you quit a book a few years ago, don't be afraid to revisit it every now and then. It may just be a book you need to read during a certain season of your life. Okay, so now that you have the confidence to quit books, let's talk about the different levels of reading. You aren't going to read Snow Crash the same way that you would read some introduction to deep learning machines. They're two vastly different books. So naturally, you need to tailor how you read to what you read. In the brilliant words of Francis Bacon, some books are to be tasted, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested. The levels of reading that are outlined in Mortimer Adler's How to Read a Book offers four different approaches to reading, from easiest to hardest. Most of your time reading will be spent between levels two and three. Level one is reading to entertain. This is the level of reading taught in our elementary schools, and if you can read the YouTube description, then you probably already know how to do this one. Level two reading is reading to inform. It's sort of like a superficial read. You skim, you dive in, you dive out, and you get a feel for the book and get the gist of things. We've been taught that skimming and superficial reading are bad for understanding, but that is not necessarily the case. Using these tools effectively can actually increase your understanding. This type of reading allows us to look at the author's blueprint and evaluate the merits of a deeper reading experience. Level three is reading to understand. This is the real workhorse of reading. Back to the bacon quote, this is a thorough reading where you chew and digest on things. There are four rules to this type of reading. Number one, you wanna classify the book according to its subject matter. Info manuals with info manuals, fictions with fiction, and so on. Rule number two, state what the whole book is about in the clearest possible way. Rule number three, Examine its major parts in their order and relation, and outline these parts as you have outlined the whole. Essentially, you want to be able to map out the whole book and understand how each chapter or topic relates to each other chapter or topic in the book. Rule number four, you want to define the problem or problems the author is trying to solve. This step takes a whole lot of work, and it's a difficult process. It should only be reserved for the books that you really want to understand the intricacies of. Finally, the last level of reading is reading to master. If you just read one book on a topic, odds are you have a lot of blind spots in your knowledge. Therefore, reading to master involves reading a variety of books and articles and academic papers on the same topic, finding and evaluating the contradictions and forming your own opinion. The goal with this step isn't to necessarily understand any one book in depth, but rather understand an idea or a subject in depth. While we're here on the topic of reading and different forms of reading, I might as well address speed reading. 
To put it bluntly, reading speed is a vanity metric. No one cares how fast you read or how many books you read last year. In the real world, what matters is what you absorb. Reading quickly is really only helpful when you want to find something that's worth reading. But once you do, dive in and do so slowly and deeply. One very, very important skill when it comes to reading well is knowing what to read. Choosing great books is honestly a real skill because improving what you get out of reading starts with selecting great raw material. It's just like if you had a house full of junk food, it would be really hard to make healthy choices. Likewise, it's hard to get great insights from books that haven't really stood the test of time. But if you're like most people, you'll naturally be drawn to newer books. New books are full of sex appeal and marketing and, unfortunately, some empty promises. While a few new books might prove to be valuable, the vast majority of them will really they'll just be forgotten in a few months. So use time as your sorting metric. Time sorts the books worth reading from the ones that should just be skimmed or really ignored. Since reading time is limited, it should be directed at knowledge that lasts. So read old books and read the best ones twice. Aside from choosing great books, taking great notes might be the next most important part of the process for reading well. Here are a few methods for taking notes while reading. The first method of taking notes is called the blank sheet method. This method will 10x your comprehension overnight. Here's how it works. Before you start reading a new book, take out a blank sheet of paper. Write down what you know about the book or subject you are about to read. A mind map, if you will. After you finish a reading session, spend a few minutes adding to the map with a different color. Before you start your next reading session, review the page. When you're done reading, put these blank sheets into a binder that you periodically review. If that method doesn't work for you, you can try a more conventional approach to note taking. At the end of each chapter, write a few bullet points that summarize the main idea or specific points. Use your own words and not the author's. Try and connect it to something meaningful in your life, like a memory or another idea. And also, make note of any unanswered questions you had while reading. When you're done with a book, put it down for a week. When that time is up, pick it up again and go through all your notes. In a lot of cases, reading your notes will be as good as reading the book again. The point of both conventional notes and the blank sheet is to connect new knowledge to old knowledge and point out gaps in your understanding. Because writing about what you read is a great way to see what you've actually learned. You can't go where you wanna go if you're not learning all the time. One of the best ways to learn is to read. One of the best ways to learn more is to read more. But reading habits don't need to be complicated. You can start a simple 25 page a day habit right now. While it seems small, the gains really do add up quickly. If you enjoyed this video and you want to continue mastering the best of what other people have already figured out, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want more from Farnham Street, sign up for our weekly newsletter in the description box below, or you can visit fs.blog newsletter.